All right, our next speaker is Andre Ristia. He's a PhD student uh, here at UWA. He's well decorated for winning prize talks, so I'm looking forward to this one. Thank you, Adam. Hi, everyone. My name is Andre. I'm a PhD student at ICRA UWA here in Perth, and today I'll be talking about the Tau Fisher relation in the nearby universe, and I'll focus on the physical causes of scatter in this relation and on whether or not the Tauri Fischer depends on the kinematic tracer, be that stars or gas. Now, as most of you will know, the Tauri Fischer is a fundamental correlation between a galaxy's rotational velocity and its stellar mass, or total baryonic mass. So if we consider our average rotating this galaxy and measure its velocity profile, it would look something like this, right? It would have a velocity that peaks relatively close to the center and then reaches an asymptotic rotational velocity as the influence of the dark matter halo becomes more pronounced. And so if we take a sample of these galaxies and plot their rotational velocity versus their stellar mass, we'll get a linear correlation with some scatter, of course, which is referred to as the stellar mass tau fischer relation. Now, this relation reflects a state of dynamical equilibrium in our systems. And this equilibrium stems from the cosmological equivalence between mass and velocity, right? The mass and velocity of baryons correlate with the mass and velocity of dark matter halos. On top of that, we've got the effect of mergers, the effect of baryonic processes such as feedback, which may alter this state of equilibrium. And so because of these characteristics, the Tully Fisher is a fundamental tool for calibration for cosmological simulations and also instrumental for uh, tracing galaxy evolution across cosmic time. Now, it's very important for both of these applications to have a representative sample of galaxies to compare to or to calibrate to. Uh, and this is something that my, uh, my study has built up a bit upon, and I'll get to that in a second. Now, recent studies of the Tauri Fischer typically focus on finding the most fundamental correlation in the sense that they try to minimize the scatter uh, between some measure of the mass and some measure of the velocity. And in doing that, they typically focus on selecting rotationally supported spiral galaxies such as this one, whereas earlier time more dispersion dominated systems are neglected, regardless of whether or not the stars and gas in these galaxies have any degree of rotation. Now this is something that uh, I've uh, tried to improve upon in my, my work by constructing a sample of galaxies which is representative in optical and kinematic morphology. And with this sample, the main questions that I've addressed were whether or not the scattering the Tauri Fischer has any physical meaning, and if so, what physical processes is it tracing, and whether or not the stellar and gas rotation are tracing different Tauri Fischer relations. So to tackle these questions and shortcomings, I've used the Manga Galaxy Survey, which is an integral field spectroscopic survey, similar to SAMI. Its final data release is providing stellar and gas kinematic maps for over 10,000 galaxies in the field and group environment. And my goal in this project was to extract stellar and gas rotational velocities for these galaxies. Now, I won't go too much into the details of the methodology, but I will say that for that, I'm using basically a simple slit approach in which I find the galaxy's main kinematic axis, which is shown here by the dark red line, and I extract the rotational velocity along this line. Now, with this kinematic information available, what I do is I select a representative sample of galaxies with high quality, reliable stellar and gas kinematics to work with. And all of these galaxies are, the kinematics of all of these galaxies are reaching at least one half light radius or RE. Right, so we can now go ahead and have a look at what the Tully Fischer looks like for these galaxies. So here I'm showing the stellar Tully Fischer, so essentially the velocity of stars at one RE versus the total stellar mass in the galaxies in my sample. The color coding is according to the lambda RE spin parameter, which is a measure of the rotational support in these galaxies. So the darker the color, the more rotationally supported the galaxy will be. And what you notice is this correlates very nice with the scattering the relation, and I'll get to that point in a second. But if I take these exact same galaxies and plot their gas velocity versus their mass, this is what the relation looks like. So I will point out that the Tully Fischer relations for stars and gas at 1RE agree quite well in, in the sense that the slope and the intercept are consistent within the uncertainties. We only just get a smaller scattering the gas relation. Right, now to uh, 
well, to address the elephant in the room, which is the scatter, if I pick one galaxy in the stellar relation way above the Tali Fisher relation, this is what it looks like. So we see a nice late type galaxy, and the kinematics tell us this is a very rotationally supported disk, whereas at a similar stellar mass below the relation, this is what the galaxies look like. So much more earlier type in morphology, and while we do see some degree of rotation in a disk like pattern, this is very dispersion supported. If we do the same thing for the gas and pick a galaxy above the relation, again, we see a very nice late type galaxy with a stable rotating gas disk, not much turbulence, but with, but if we, uh, well, if we look at the same stellar mass below the gas tally fissure, what we get is galaxies that look a bit like this. So we see these small turbulent gas disks, which look similar to what we see in high redshift galaxies. And in this particular case, what you notice is the gas disk is also misaligned with respect to the stars, which is quite interesting. Um, right, so we see from this that the scatter in the velocity direction in the Tali Fisher seems to correlate very well with kinematic morphology for stars and the degree of turbulence for gas, which in this plot I should have said was parameterized to the V over sigma ratio, right? So a larger value means a less turbulent gas disk. But the question is, are there any other parameters or any other processes that contribute to this scatter? And in this study, I've looked at a whole suite of parameters which might contribute to the scatter in the Tali fissure. I've looked, of course, at the kinematic morphology, which I just mentioned earlier, through the lambda re and v over sigma parameters. I've looked at the galaxy's optical morphology through the stellar mass surface density of these galaxies, and this is tracing the distribution of the stellar mass in the galaxy, so essentially the effect of hierarchical growth through mergers or gas accretion, and I want to see if this has any effect on potentially causing the galaxies to deviate from the Tali Fisher in any way. I've looked at the environmental density through the um, tidal strength of the group galaxies. This is a parameter that essentially, oh, I'll go back. This is tracing the tidal strength that our galaxies feel from their group neighbors. And I want to see if this has any effect on disturbing the kinematics in any way. And finally, I've looked at signs of recent or ongoing gas accretion, whether from a galaxy merger or smooth accretion. And uh, well, this is a known uh, factor that is, well, well it's, it has been found to increase turbulence in gas disks, especially high redshifts. And I trace that through the uh, kinematic misalignment angle between stars and gas. And the last thing I've looked at is the star formation rate properties, star formation properties of the galaxies through the star formation rate density. I want to see if this has any effect, especially on the gas kinematics in increasing turbulence or having an effect in any other way. Now, for that, I use a partial linear correlation coefficient between the Tauri Fisher residuals in the velocity direction and all of these parameters that I've mentioned. And I should say that this correlation coefficient is taking into account covariances with stellar mass and we all, with all the other parameters when one single correlation is considered. So now we can go ahead and finally see the results of this. And I'll start with the results for stars. And I'll show this in the shape of a grid plot where each cell is color coded by the correlation coefficient between the Tauri Fisher residuals at 1RE and 2RE and the respective parameter on the top axis. This is what the results are for the stars. And we see that the darker colors or the stronger correlations are with lambda RE or with kinematic morphology but we don't really see much of a correlation with anything else, just some tentative shallow correlations with stellar mass and star formation rate surface density, not much with environment or kinematic misalignments. For gas, the picture is surprisingly somewhat similar. Um, we see a strong correlation with the V over sigma, which is the degree of turbulence, especially at 1RE in the central parts, not so much at 2RE, but again, no correlation with environment, signs of recent gas accretion, or star forming properties. So we now know which, uh, which galaxy properties correlate with the scatter. We can formulate a hypothesis on what physical processes cause the galaxies to move away from the Tauri fissure. For the stars, this is probably the buildup of dispersion supported structures or bulges, right? Stars being collisionless can form themselves in these structures. Um, whereas for the gases, the drivers of turbulence. And interestingly, for the parameters that we probe, we can't really tell which 
driver of turbulence is the dominant one. So I'll just wrap up by going through our main findings. We've looked at the tally fisher relation for stars and gas in the nearby universe and found that these are largely consistent and 1RE. The scattering the tally fisher correlates well only with the kinematic morphology for stars and the degree of turbulence for gas. And this points towards the processes that I mentioned in the previous slide. And interestingly, we see no correlation with a tidal effects from neighboring galaxies or with signs of recent gas accretion. And I'll leave it there. Thank you very much.